My name is Dennis Ashley. I'm one of the trauma critical care intensivists here at the Medical Center of Central Georgia in Macon. And I think we've got an interesting patient for you today I'd like to tell you about. This is a 49 year old female that is post-op day two for a total abdominal hysterectomy, uh, omentectomy, splenectomy, and sigmoid colectomy for ovarian cancer. Uh, as you can tell from that description, it was a major operation, a lot of blood loss, about 1,500 cc's, with uh, about 15 liters resuscitation in the operating room. So when she was brought back to the ICU, the surgical trauma ICU, we placed the HTEE probe to guide us in our resuscitation. We've made a couple of runs here. I'm going to show you and take you through the course. And then once I do that and show you what we've seen, we'll go live and show you what we're looking at now. Basically here on the, the monitor, I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, contracting left ventricle. We see these white dots in the middle. This is the papillary muscles. That's about the level of the heart that we're cutting through and giving the cross-sectional area that gives us our best view of the left ventricle. You can see right in the middle, we've got the, the, the blood in the middle of the left ventricle and a nice concentric contraction of the left ventricle. We measured the left ventricular end diastolic area of the heart and found it to be 7.9 centimeters. We like it to typically be around 10 to 12 centimeters uh, so what that tells us is she's a little dry. Really we don't have to use that number. You can, after you've done a few of these, you can just look at it and really tell that she needs a little bit of volume. So this was our baseline TEE examination after she came to the ICU. On post-op day one, and, and I might mention at this time she was on Levifed, about 15 to 20 mics. She was tachycardic, consistent with the clinical picture and needing volume. After our resuscitation throughout the night, uh, you can see our left ventricular end diastolic area had increased to 9.1. The heart is less, uh, uh, less tachycardic. We've got pretty good contraction here. You see the papillary muscles here and here. Again, it's the same view. But what we really didn't expect to find, what you see the right ventricle here and outside the heart, we see this black, which is fluid in the pericardial sac. So she had developed a pericardial effusion uh, much to our surprise. At this time, we had been able to wean her levofed and was actually planning extubation that afternoon until we had this finding. We continued our resuscitation. She got albumin, more normal saline, two units of blood, and some FFP. And you can see here, we've got our left ventricular end diastolic area up to 10.4. But again, if you really just look at the pictures, to the naked eye, you can see this ventricle is uh, much more efficient. It good filling volume here, good contraction. But if you'll notice outside the heart here, around the heart, the infusion has increased, and she has uh, early signs of uh, pericardial tamponade. If I showed you some of the other views here, you could actually see that right ventricle just lightly compressed in, in early diastole. This resulted in a consultation to our cardiothoracic surgeons. She went this morning for a, a, a pericardial window, received about 200, or they took off about 250 cc's of volume. And you can see now post uh, window, we've got ventricular contraction, again, the same view. And this fluid out here outside the ventricle has disappeared. There's a little bit of, of, of a black streak through here, and that is just artifact from the NG, which sometimes you'll get if you catch it just in the right plane. So with that history, we'll go live now. <clears throat> The probe is inserted into her, in, into her stomach. Show you the handle here. This is really, really, there's not too much to the handle for me to manipulate or do. Uh, I do have one lever here, and I'll move the lever uh, back towards me, which is uh, uh, anti-flex. I'll move it away or in this direction, which will be retroflex. So you'll hear me alluding to that throughout the presentation, and that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm a surgeon, so I really understand the anatomy, or I, I learn by looking at the anatomy. And so basically, I'll draw your attention here. You see the probe is down into the stomach. And what I'm going to do is antiflex and aim the probe up through where the beam sh shoots uh, cross-sectional area-wise through the, uh, the left ventricle. Once we do that, then you'll see this view that you've been looking at with blood in the heart and then the, the, uh, the left ventricular muscle. So we've gone live on the screen here, and I'm going to just manipulate this a little bit until I bring the ventricle 
into view. And you can see right here, papillary muscle, papillary muscle, ventricular contraction. Again, we've got a little bit of an artifact from the NG, but it really doesn't occlude our view. I'm going to bring that in a little tighter now that I've pointed to it on the screen. And you can see the good ventricular contraction. And if you look outside the heart here, there's really no pericardial effusion, which we wouldn't expect to see after her surgery today. So now I'm going to go to the, to the next view. There's really three major views that we, we use at the bedside here with HTEE. <clears throat> I'm going to retract the probe back out of the stomach into the esophagus. And once I get it to this level here, I can, I can aim through the heart at this level and get the four chamber view. And you'll see I'll be looking at the right atrium, the right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. <clears throat> now to do that, I have to find a very important landmark as I come back, and that will be the aortic valve. And you see the aortic valve coming into play right there. Now once I find that, I'm ready to retroflex, like you see on the screen up there in the upper right hand corner. And when I do that, you can see I'm bringing in the four chamber view. Right here. So I've got right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, septum, left ventricle, mitral valve and left atrium up here and let me just change the position here a little bit so you can see that a little better. And now you can see the four chamber view here. Now what's important about this, on one of our previous views, in early diastole on some of our preliminary views, you can see this, this right ventricle having trouble filling, consistent with early tamponade. The third view that I like to get to help guide our resuscitation is pulling the probe back just a little bit further into the esophagus and looking at the superior vena cava to see what our resuscitation is like. Is the vena cava full? Is it flat? Does she need more volume or not? And to do that, I need to find my aorta. Again, I'll find the aortic valve first, aorta, and then I'll see the SVC. So again, right here, I'm looking at the aortic valve. I want to come proximal to that, or actually get into the proximal aorta. And once I do that, you will see aorta here, superior vena cava here. I'll pull back and just bring that in a little tighter. And you can see, and notice this patient's uh, being ventilated. You can see there's some uh, collapse of that superior vena cava with respiration. And so basically this patient, if she showed signs of hypovolemia, might be or would be probably fluid responsive. And that goes along with her history. So <clears throat> for urine output drops off at all, I can easily see here she needs more volume. I certainly wouldn't just treat the screen. I wouldn't it's just like I wouldn't just treat a CVP, but certainly knowing uh, that I can look at this and tell you that it's not intrinsic renal disease, that, that she needs a little bit more volume. So in summary, I've really very quickly here gone through three different important views, if you will, with the HTE probe. In our patient, it was helpful with our resuscitation. She was resuscitated in the operating room, but was still hypovolemic when she got to the ICU. This helped guide our resuscitation. That's not new, that's something we're used to. But in this patient, we also identified a new problem. Pericardial fusion, pericardial tamponade, that led us down an extra or another track. We'd actually weaned our pressors, thought we were headed toward extubation, had to change gears a little bit, get cardiothoracic surgery involved, and then get a pericardial window. Now we're back to that baseline again where she's off her pressors, she's doing very well, and I hope tonight or by tomorrow we'll have her off the ventilator. So with that being said, I'll stop there. I hope that's helpful. Uh, thank you for letting us share our patient with you. I'll be happy to take questions or to kick it back to Dr. Christian or uh, one of the other panel members. Thank you very much.